Hey there, this is Michael from Make It WordPress and today I'm going to look into the influence of your server CPU and the amount of CPU cores and how fast your WordPress website will run and the influence it has on the speed of your WordPress website. So if you're into WordPress hosting, this is a very interesting video. And if you don't know me yet, I'm Michael and I'm on quest to find the best for WordPress. All right, so let's start with some basic explanation of some basic stuff. If you already know how servers work and how everything related to WordPress hosting is, then you can just skip this introduction. If not, please uh, continue watching this part. So if you have a WordPress website hosted uh, with a hosting company hosted on the internet, it's basically r running on a server. So if you see a server, you usually think of these huge rooms with all these computers and that's what it is a server is a computer connected to the internet that runs specific software and in this case that software also supports the hosting of wordpress so as you may know each computer has a certain amount of ram and also a certain amount of disk space and a certain amount of uh, cpu cores or it has a certain cpu the central processing unit and this processing unit is uh, responsible for all calculations and in this case also for rendering your WordPress website. So that's basically how it works. And in this video, I'm going to test four cloud providers. Um, I picked these providers by purpose because the, these allow me to log into a server directly and have more control on a bare bone level. If you would have been using a regular WordPress host, this would be like less common. Still, they use the same technology, still they use servers, but less control and these providers are upcloud and as you can see they provide a certain amount um, of memory and cpu hasner which basically has the same model also using certain cpus and ram and also disk space and i'm also looking into going to look into filter their high frequency servers which are pretty fast servers they also use a certain amount of cpus virtual cpus and a certain memory and so forth and at last i'm looking into webdoc and again they use this same model of having a cpu and a certain amount of memory and in this video i'm going to look into the influence that the amount and the speed of your uh, the amount of cpu cores or threads in this case has and also the speed of these cores All right, so you may be thinking, what am I looking at? Well, I opened four shelves to four different servers, and we're going to look into these servers and see how fast these are. And before doing that, we are going to investigate how fast their actual CPU is. And as I explained in this video, I'll be explaining the importance of CPU, your CPU speed, and the amount of CPU cores for WordPress performance. Not only having a large amount of course is important, but also having fast course is very important. So here on the left, I have uh, started a, a server from Upcloud, which is a great and fast cloud provider. On the right, on the top right, I have a server from Hetzner, which is also a very uh, great and cost-effective cloud provider. There on the bottom right, I have Filter, which is also known for its performance. And on the left, I have WebDoc, which offers a very fast uh, server based on Risen. So let's see what CPUs the, all these parties are offering. So here at Upcloud, we have an AMD Epic processor and it's running at approximately 2800 megahertz. It looks uh, pretty nice. As you can see this comment, if you're logged into a server, will open up some details about your uh, CPU. And again, we have Hetzner here. Um, this is the slowest CPU here in this family, but uh, still it's pretty nice, running at about two and a half gigahertz. And there we have Vulter and Vulter. This is a pretty fast uh, VPS. In this case, it's an Intel processor and it's running at almost 3.7 gigahertz. So will this give better WordPress performance? I'm curious if this is saying everything and at last in here we have an AMD Risen processor um, 
5950X, which is known to be very fast. It's on a lower uh, level, but it has a kind of high boost. So how will this perform actually? So now that I've looked into the processors, I'm going to do a little benchmarks and actually I already did a few benchmarks. I will open them up in, a, in my browser because I've wrote, I created a small plugin and what this plugin does is it inserts 10,000 posts, it then queries 10,000 posts and then deletes 10,000 posts. So for example, I can enter a number here and then say run benchmark and then it will give the result. So just inserting 10 posts, of course, goes very fast. And um, for each of these things, a score is calculated. And so that you actually see how fast your server is. And why is this an interesting plugin, uh, interesting benchmark? Because inserting, querying and deleting posts is something you will be doing commonly in WordPress. And it says a lot about uh, your actually database performance, but also the speed of your uh, servers. So I already run these benchmarks and as you can see the WebDoc, which had the AMU Risen 5950X server runs really fast with an insertion time of 7.30 seconds, uh, a query time of under 98 milliseconds and a deletion time of about 30, 13.5 seconds for uh, inserting, deleting and querying 10,000s of posts. And that's actually really fast. So how will the other parties do? So for UpCloud, we have a slightly slow score. And again, this, this processor was slightly slower. It ran uh, at around 2.8 gigahertz. And you see this reflected in the score. It's a bit slower. And again, if we do, if we run this for a smaller number, we will see similar figures, but then um, actually a degree lower in this case, about 10 times as slow. So as you can see, this also scales up nicely how fast these tasks and these benchmarks run. We also had a server from Filter, um, which is a high frequency server, which is known for its great performance. And well, it's right. They run pretty well, but they're actually not really faster as UpCloud. And that, that's interesting because as I, as I showed, this processor is using, is having a higher clock rate, but that doesn't say everything. I, I think UpCloud is running a more new processor, um, processor from AMD. And despite it having a lower clock rate, it's still more effective in doing these operations. Very interesting to see. And at last we have uh, Hetzner, which uh, had the slowest clocked processor. And again, they have the slowest time for 10,000 posts. So if you compare this to uh, filter, it's slightly faster with 11 seconds. UpCloud is here with 10 seconds. And then we have the winner um, WebDoc with seven seconds. All of these, these processors just use one core. So I all, I'll have the cheapest subscription for them. What will happen if we scale up? Well, that will be will be faster if you um, are running a processor with more cores. For example, if I go to upload.com, which is one of the server providers I used in here and pricing um, cloud servers, you have these plans. And you can see you can scale up to having more CPUs and so forth. But will it make these processes of inserting, deleting, querying posts actually faster. Well, we're going to see in a minute, but first we're going to do some uh, little load testing and see how um, these websites actually perform if we put a lot of users on it. So for this, I have opened up another screen and I'm going to use a very um, useful program. It's called H2Load and with H2Load, I can actually, um, I can do some load testing. So simulate users visiting these sites. So I will be executing this command and what it says, it will, it will fire up 10 clients, which will send over hundred requests to the given URL. And this is um, the WordPress website running on a 
Hetzner server and let's see how well this does. And it does pretty well. We had around 37 requests per second. I think this is a good score. This, this is also related to the fact that Hetzner uh, uses two cores in their offering instead of one CPU core. So let's see how AppCloud is doing. We can do the same command in there, but I will change it to the URL where I've running my AppCloud server. And there we are. We can already see this feels a little bit slower. Yeah, this is a bit slower. It's only 17, 17 requests per second. So Hetzner is actually doing uh, a lot better, better here, um, despite Hetzner being a bit slower here in the in this deletion, insertion and deletion benchmark. And if you're simulating users, like we did here, more cores will help. But if you're doing only querying a database, inserting posts, it doesn't really matter how many cores you have. It will run as fast as your fastest core. The only thing is that if you have more core cores, you can run more of these processes simultaneously. And faster cores will run these processes faster. And that's because WordPress is actually single threaded. So it can do one process basically at a time. And therefore it's important that you have fast cores. So what does it mean in practice? Um, let's just finish our benchmarks and see how the other parties are actually doing. So we still have, we still have a filter in here. Let's see how well they do. And they do slightly better as a cloud. They have a slightly faster processor and this is still a server with one core. And at last we're going to look into WebDoc, which should be the fastest process for a server with one core. And um, there we are, we have 25 uh, requests per second for the server. So let's see what happens if we scale up. So I'll be scaling up the service for Hetzner. I'll be going to the um, to this subscription actually with double amount, of course. For Vulture, I'm actually going. Oh, they updated their website. It's uh, kind of um, messy now, actually. But I'm going to go to. Um, the following subscriptions with actually two virtual CPUs. And then um, for UpCloud, I am going to run actually the subscription with also two cores. And at last for a web doc, I'm going to use um, the subscription in here with two threads, so one level further. So I'll be scaling them now. All right, I scaled these servers and let's see if this benchmark is going to run faster, actually. I'm going to run this for all tabs at an instance. So all of these servers have double of the course they had before. So will it run faster? I already explained it a bit, so you probably know it. You probably won't. And there we are, the new benchmarks are in. So for WebDoc, there's no difference. So the amount of course doesn't matter for your backend speed in WordPress. For UpCloud, it's also similar. It's pretty close. 11 seconds, 10.7, 19, 20. And again, for filter, it fails to benchmark even. That's interesting. Let's try this one again. And um, yeah, for Hetzner, it's the same. Our filter seems to be down. So let me check it and see if I can get it up again. Oh, it's still an upgrade loop. Too bad. So. <laughs> Upgrading a server and filter takes uh, uh, quite some time. In the meantime, let's see, let's do some load testing by simulating some users. So again, we're going to use h2load. 
And in this case, we're going to start with Hetzner and this is simulating 10 users firing up to 100 requests. And let's see, now that we have more cores, will it have, will it make a difference? And there we are, it's slightly faster than before because before we had 37 for Hetzner and now it's 42. It's not as much as I expected actually. Let's see if AppCloud is doing differently now that it has two cores. And there we are, AppCloud is doing much better now that it has two cores. If you go up a bit, we see this test. This was applied before, around 17, 17 requests per second it could handle. And now that we have two cores, it is um, up to 32. And that's the power of having more cores. You can handle more processes simultaneously. Uh, in other words, you can handle more users simultaneously because each time a user is going to visit your WordPress site and you're not using caching, the server will be hit. It needs to do some calculation, calculations so the CPU will be busy. And in the end, if you have simultaneous users, they have to wait for the server to be ready with the calculations. So, and if you have more cores, you can serve more simultaneously. Then let's see how WebDoc is actually doing now it has now that it has two cores available. And again, it's just also doing a lot better with uh, around 45 requests per second. And in the meantime, uh, our filter server is still upgrading. It will be done actually before today. So we'll skip that test for now. I hope this video was uh, clear to you and it gave you a good insight in the difference of having um, having different kind of processors, different, different kind of server providers and also the influence of having a fast server. And all of these cloud performers perform actually quite well if you're using shared hosting, some typical, uh, some not cheaper WordPress hosting, it will run a lot slower than this. These cores are already pretty good. But what I wanted to stress is that if you want your WordPress backend to run well, you both need a CPU that has uh, is fast, so it has fast cores, fast single core performance. And if you want to handle a lot of processes, a lot of users simultaneously, you also need more cores. So best is of course, more cores and fast cores, but depending on your use case, you may be looking at providers that provide somewhat more cores at the okay speed for a good price or providers that have really fast cores. If you are going to do a lot of backend editing, a lot of import, imports and so forth. But these are important considerations. Also, if you're going to start a WordPress hosting business, WordPress does run well if you have um, CPU cores that have a high single um, single core score. Nevertheless, this was one of these. This is one aspect which has influence on WordPress performance. And there are a lot of other factors and metrics that have uh, impact on WordPress performance. It's like the speed of your disks, WordPress itself, the plugins you're using, how well the code is written, how well your server is optimized, a lot of these things. So this is just one aspect, but it is an important one. And I found it very interesting that the CPU speed and the amount of cores has influence on specific parts of your performance. All right, there we are. I hope this video made some sense to you and gave you an insight of the speed of your CPU and the influence of the amount of CPU cores. Um, if you have any questions, comments, feel free to leave them below in the video. Um, I also put a link to an article in the in the video and the links to the hosting providers and again thank you for watching and have an amazing day